formsinmonday.com. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to use them. So by the end of this video, you will be a monday.com forms expert. Now I'm gonna waste no more time and head straight over to monday.com. As you can see, I am in an example monday.com system, and this is an example monday.com board. Now you may wish to add a form to an active board with live data, that's not a problem at all. The principle still remains the same. So I've got this start from scratch board here and in order to add a form, it's essentially like adding a view. So we need to go to the plus button on the right hand side of the main table, press add view, and then we want to go ahead and select the form option. If you cannot see the form option available, just go to explore more views and just search form and press open in board. So as you can see, we have now created a form. Congratulations, this is just the start. Unfortunately, there's a lot to work through. So we've got these different um, columns here and they represent the columns on our actual board. Now, if I go back to the form, we can add more columns uh, and I'll go into detail on that in a moment. But what we firstly want to do is edit our form. So if we press edit in the top left hand corner, this is where we can change the design, the structure. We can change literally everything. To start with, you may want to upload a logo, your business logo, if you're planning on distributing this form externally. Uh, maybe you're using it as a lead capture form, for example. Then we can write a title for this form. So in this instance, I'm just going to put lead capture form. This will be public facing, by the way, so I wouldn't name it that um, unless you're very, very boring. <laughs> um, I would probably name it to be slightly more interesting um, and slightly more applicable. We then obviously have ad form description if you'd like to. And then we get onto the questions, which are what are the questions we're asking the person that is going to submit the form. Now, firstly, like I mentioned, all of the columns on your board will be automatically populated on your form, but there are probably gonna be cases where you do not want some of the columns to be available on your form, and that's not a problem. Just like this name um, column here, I'm gonna click into it. I do not want this to be visible. So all I need to do is just press the hide question option. I would then personally just push this down to the bottom of the form just so it's out the way. That means that this question is not gonna be visible on the form that you send out. Then we've got our next question, which as you can see is a status option. Now these options, status options, again, relate to the column on the main board, but we can change the name. So what service are you interested in? Stid in, question mark, there we go. So that's, uh, and then what, what they'll be able to do is they'll be able to select um, whichever option they are interested in. And obviously these names, like I said, are related to the board, but you can change this to be applicable to you. What you can also do is hide options, which is really, really useful. So if there's some options you don't want people to be able to select, you can go ahead and just hide them or show them if you'd like to. We can add additional options from the form as well, which will correspond with the board. So if you add options from the form, it will add them to the board or the column in the board as well. So I'm gonna go, just put example number one. There we go, that's created a new option. So super simple again, we then have the required option. So in order to submit the form, do you want this particular question to be completed? They must complete this question in order to submit the form. Now, I think there are very few cases where you do not want to have a required option for a form because um, you want to capture the data, there's no point in people submitting half a form, right? So I would always have required on personally. And then once, once we've got this set up, we've got the clever stuff, which is conditional logic. Now, conditional logic in a nutshell is based on the answers that people give, you may give them other answers. So let me show you how this works in monday.com. If I tick the include condition, and then if answer is one of, so if it's working on it, then I may want to add and ask another question or a different question, but you can also have multiple. So if answer is one of, so working on it or example one, then ask this question. And then we can create a question and just press the plus button. And this is a great thing about forms is you can create columns on the board from the form. So I may then go ahead and put a long text option in and say, why are you interested in this question mark? And that means that if someone selects either working on it or example one, it's then gonna ask them another question. And you can click into this, again, put this as required if you would like to. Now, this is where it gets really sophisticated because we can ask multiple questions in this condition like I'm about to show you. So we might go ahead and add a single select status option but then we can add more conditions and we can just go down the rabbit hole. So I said, 
out of the so you this could be any question and i'm struggling to come up with ideas on the spot here but you could then go I include condition and if answer is one of and equal to option two then ask this and we can just keep going keep going keep going get really really extensive granular I wouldn't recommend this for a lead form, mind you, but if you're doing customer satisfaction or you've got internal forms, then this is really, really useful functionality. Do bear in mind though that, like I've mentioned before, every time we add a column to the form, it's gonna create a column on the board and it's gonna sync. It's gonna be connected to one another. So those are our options. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but you can close this window down so you can minimize it so it's easier to manage. So we've got if answer is one of working on it and example one, but we might have if this or if that. So then we can go ahead and add another condition that says if answer is, and then done or lost, which are the other two options available, or let's add working on it just for example say then we ask these questions and we have long text or a number or phone or whatever the case may be so hopefully you're starting to get the idea now we do have a couple more options every single column is going to be unique to the options available but this three dotted button option here allows us to show the options horizontally or show options in a drop down menu so just change the way that the questions are presented um, on the form just how they actually look it doesn't make any difference to the submission or anything else so i'm just going to go ahead and select show options horizontally we've then got the date column again we can rename this to um whatever <laughs> again i did say i was struggling um and we we can have this as required if you'd like to if it's not required you can just hide it so you don't want that on the form so we've then gone ahead and we've created our form with conditional logic. And like I said, this conditional logic can be as extensive as you wish. You can get, we've built some crazy complex forms in the past. From here, we might want to just change the design of the form. So on the right hand side here, we've got color. I'm not a big fan of this, um, well, pink, I suppose, salmon pink. So we might go black or we might go for a nice basic white. Um, and then we could add an image, upload your own image as the background for the form if you'd like to. We've got form format. I've not trialed this. So I've, this is new. Um, I've not really tested this much. I suppose you could have a go. I don't see what's wrong with this and I'll show you what it looks like in a moment. We've got the font. If you'd like to change the font of the form and also the color font, the color of the font, the color of the writing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then we can move it from direction as well. Uh, whether you want to do that or not again entirely up to you so once you're happy with your form you can go ahead and press the customize option this is where we are just customizing the way the form behaves so we've got use welcome screen uh, if you'd like to use a welcome screen you can just add a title description so it's like when someone clicks onto the form it doesn't go straight to the first question it says welcome this is what this form is about you may say it's going to take two minutes to complete and you can uh, change the button so welcome um, and that changes the button for example title uh, lead capture form again that depends entirely on use case um, what you're looking to do with this you might not choose to use the lead uh, use the welcome screen at all we've then got the submission view so this is the button at the end of the form at the bottom of the form i would strongly recommend hiding the monday.com branding uh, just take that option and then press submit so that's auto populated or access now for example if you're using this as a lead capture We've then got form restrictions. So show recapture challenge, require submitters to log in. So if this is an internal form, you can have that. Recapture is obviously the dreaded um, working out how many buses are in a Google picture. It takes me six hours to do. So you can enable that if you'd like to. You can make this form anonymous as well. That says, that just puts the writing here. I don't actually think it makes any difference to the submission itself, but this is an anonymous form. So if it is a customer satisfaction survey, for example, you will wanna just make sure people are aware that when they're scrutinizing your business, you're not they're not gonna upset anyone. I'm only joking, by the way. We've got schedule a close date. So if you want this form to end at a particular time, you can do. And then we can also set a response limit. So let's say we only want 50 responses on the form. Once that's done, it's done. We can also password protect the form as well, which is really, really cool. This is new. This has recently come in. If you only want certain people to access the form, you can password protect it, send them the password, and only they can submit it. We've then got the thank you screen. So this is once you've pressed the submit button or the access now button, you'll then be sent over to this screen. Um, we've got thank you. Your form was submitted successfully. You can change all of this. You can redirect as well the form submission to a different URL. So you may take them. I'm just 
speaking from the example that we're working with here, if it's lead capture, you may then redirect them to the booked meeting page or whatever is the next step in the funnel, for example. We've got show resubmit button if you want them to be able to submit another. Depends on the use case again, and then hide success image, which is this funny trophy looking thing. Whether you do that or not, entirely up to you. We've then got accessibility, so form language and form logo, alt text. I'm not getting involved in any of that. Um, and then we've got monday.com settings. So include name in name question in form. So that's what I mentioned at the start. We hid that anyway, but you can just untick it so it's completely gone. We've got include update section in form. So you know when you're writing updates on a, on a record, you can choose whether you want people to be able to write updates as well. There are very few use cases where this is going to be applicable. And then we've got sync questions and column titles as well. So questions and column titles are the names of the questions up here. So what service are you interested in? Syncing them with the title of the column on the actual board. I would recommend having this unticked. Reason being is we're going to pose the pose a question on the form, but we don't necessarily want that as a written question on the board because that just makes life tracking things a lot harder. Um, but there might again be use cases, but just so you're aware of what this functionality allows you to do. We've got group answers. So which group is this submission going to go to inside of your board on monday.com? So whatever, and then allow creating items via form. So when submitted, when the form is submitted, it creates an item inside of your board, which I would have selected. Moving on from customize, we've got share. Super simple. We just copy the link. We can send it. Um, I'm just going to demo to you what this looks like. Um, as you can see here, this is what the form is. We've got the only question that we asked, which was this, but you can see how the conditional logic works based on the answers that we submit. Very clever. I really like monday.com forms, to be honest with you. And then based on the answers, we your conditional logic can become more and more extensive. Um, you can deactivate the form as well. If you want it to just, if you want to just turn off the form, just press deactivate now that kills the link. We then got analyze. So analyze is where you can just see reporting on the submissions that have been made on that particular form. Now, if I'm being totally honest with you, I personally wouldn't use this reporting. I would create my own reports in a view on the same board. Um, I think this is good. I just don't think this is particularly extensive. Um, and we've got analytics as well. But yeah, I'd, I would probably create my own reports as opposed to looking at the analytics provided because it depends on the data that you're looking to manage as well. And then we've got automate. So we can automate the submission of items from a form going somewhere. So when a form is submitted, notify all teammates via et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's uh, another topic in of itself. But once you press publish, the form is then live. Um, you can at any time come back to edit it. You've got the drop down menu on the right hand side where you can embed form, get QR code or share via the various social media platforms. Um, and that's about it, really. You've got the results functionality, um, which essentially populates onto your actual board as well. But once you've got your form up running with all of the conditional logic, you are good to go. So hopefully this video has been useful. By the way, if you need help setting up monday.com for your business, check out the link below. We'd be delighted to help. Um, hopefully this video was helpful and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.